What I would say is, I kind of put this all together in our monthly publication, titling it, Breaking Up is Sort of Hard to Do. And that's not referring to Mrs. Johnson and myself, to be clear. What it's really referring to is the markets and the Fed and the very accommodative policy we've had out there. And this CPI number coming out is going to be a very important read. But, Brian, like you said, we've already priced in a fair number of rate hikes from the Fed. And at this point in time, you've got about five hikes sort of priced in at this point in time. And when you think about the batting average of the Fed's kind of historical record, and they've only been right about 50 percent of the time. And they have sort of overshot four out of the last sort of five times. So I would say at this point in time, the CPI number is going to be very, very important for stocks. And also, we could very much turn this sort of value-driven market uh, back into a growth-driven market again if this number comes out below expectations. Um, if it comes out above expectations, I think you're going to continue to see some of these energy stocks continue to work, and you're certainly going to see uh, yields, perhaps, on the 10-year move up very quickly, and that's not going to help the growth stocks at this point in time. So this is a very important number, and our team, uh, Brian, is watching it very carefully. So if we come in a little bit softer, less than 7.2 or whatever, and it seems hard, I mean, having just go to the grocery store or whatever you want to do, and it seems hard to believe <laughs> that the number will come in softer. But if it does, Craig, that could be bullish for growth stock parts of the market, because perhaps we're talking about fewer rate hikes. That is correct. I think if it's going to be softer, you're going to see fewer potential rate hikes. You're going to see equity markets work, and you're going to see specifically a lot of these stocks in the technology sector that have been under a lot of pressure. Some of those stocks that really don't have uh, earnings and that sort of style of selling those stocks and buying those tech stocks that do have earnings will probably flip back around. And you could even see some of the beaten up areas like biotech uh, start to turn. And if you just look at a chart of an XBI or Vertex or some of these other names out there, Brian, you can see they're starting to turn up in here just a little bit. And that move could certainly gain speed and momentum on a, a bit of a weaker number out here. Now, if the number comes in above oh. expectations, you had a question? I say overall, though, Craig, are you, are you sticking by your, 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 as we've talked about, your Van Halen uh, forecast for the <laughs> S&P 500, 5150? No change with our 5150, Brian. I think, you know, if this market is going to be a little bit uh, soft in the short term, which I think is going to be soft and volatile in the near term, I still think by year end you can see this market move up toward this 5150 number. We think in terms of our work, just the total technicals, the relative strength and everything else, you still want to be overweight energy. You want to be overweight financials and you want to be overweight some of these larger cap tech stocks right now, the ones that have earnings specifically.